Hello and welcome back to South Park Explained here on No BS. This is our first episode of the year because South Park just had their first episode of the year. And I gotta say, I'm very excited to talk about this one. It, of course, was called the Pandemic Special, and it is actually very special for a number of reasons. Not only is it the first one-hour premiere for the show, but it's the first special, too. You know, a special is kind of like when a show has an episode outside of a season, like they'll have a Christmas special sometimes, or, you know, a fall special special or sometimes a show like a new show might have an election special or something like that. And that's what South Park was going for here. They went with a pandemic special for obvious reasons. Obviously, we're dealing with this whole crisis, this pandemic, this virus spreading across the country. And South Park used that as a big part of their story. In fact, they even infused their characters into this story and kind of rewrote the history behind this whole pandemic. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We have a lot to go over today. So we got to get right into the story and the details. This tweet and article has some more kind of flashy headlines. I want to give you guys the beat by beat in a minute, but first let's read this. It says, South Park tackles COVID, police brutality, lockdowns, wildfires, protests, Zoom meetings, mental breakdowns, Donald Trump, the Build-A-Bear workshop, and an avalanche of other topics, big and small, during its hour-long pandemic special. So they do, in fact, tackle pretty much everything you can think of. As you can see by these pictures, you've got scientists and doctors talking about the pandemic. You've got Mr. Garrison playing Donald Trump. You've got the police arresting some kids or forcing them into another room. And then this is a picture of the school here on the bottom right where they have all these shields and precautions at school, social distancing. It's basically hitting on everything you could think of. And I have to say, right out the gate, South Park nailed it. I thought it was a great episode. They really encompassed everything throughout this year. They've got the whole pandemic. They got some politics in there. They referenced the election. They even go so far as to bring up China, the Mickey Mouse, Disney. Disney, and wildfires even pop up at the end. So with all that said, let's finally get to the story and to the breakdown of that. This is a good article with a good breakdown. It says, the episode is set during the pandemic. The episode opens with Stephen Stotch reprimanding people for not properly wearing masks and telling Butters he is not allowed to go to Build-A-Bear. Stephen then convinces people to wear a mask over their nose so they don't look like chin diapers. Randy also does a live show about how Tegrity was growing during the pandemic. He then introduces his pandemic special. Sharon gets mad about having a pandemic special. So this encapsulates the beginning. As you can see by this clip from the show, this is Butters and his dad with the masks on. Masks is a big part of this story. Obviously, this is a big meme in the real world too. Everyone's wearing masks. So it's fitting for the first scene to come out the gate with Butters' dad like kind of mask shaming people. They also come up with that funny name, chin diapers is what they call it. That's where you actually wear the mask, not over your nose, just on your chin. And it doesn't really do anything, but some people still wear it that way because it's kind of like a security apparatus. Us now it like kind of is like almost like a placebo effect I would say because even though it might not be doing anything it makes you feel better wearing a mask even if you're not wearing it properly now onto the Randy part the Randy speech is really hilarious he talks about his company and how he's still doing really well he has a trade that is pretty much bulletproof for this whole crisis he of course sells green plants now and does that kind of thing uh, but that's really besides the point the real point is that Randy kind of goofs on these other business owners and he says oh this guy opened a restaurant you know, he'd screwed up. And then this lady opened a salon and he's like, whoops. And the way he says it, it's so funny. He's like gloating. It's also really inappropriate. It's just an over the top joke though, of course. This is representing people's businesses going out of business, people losing their jobs. Things have been going on like this throughout the pandemic. It's fortunate that Randy had a good time, but that's really not the only case. So the next part of the story has um, Cartman in his room. Cartman comes up. He actually sings a little song about social distancing. I'm not sure if you can see in the back here, he has the six foot pole that he uses to keep people six foot away from him. He holds it up at his mom and all kinds of people. It's really funny. And the other part that's really good is Cartman, of course, doesn't want to go to school. He's really happy about this pandemic because he hasn't had to go to school. He has these little Zoom classes. Like you could see, they make fun of Zoom and the online stuff. But what really ends up happening is Cartman just pretends his computer's freezing. And then he like holds up a picture of himself on the screen and just walks away and doesn't really pay attention after that. He's basically getting out of class. He's a very industrious, young fella who comes up with a way to get out of it. And that's the basic intro premise. And those set up like the two storylines. The next thing that happens is Randy realizes that he might have had something to do with the virus. There's an announcement that a bat is what transferred the virus. And it says a bat that came from Wuhan on the news. This makes Randy have a big flashback where he took a trip to China last season. And he says that in the episode, like he does without the episode. You know, there's a lot of meta commentary here that I want to 
of reference. Like, for example, they actually reference the pandemic special within the pandemic special because it becomes this meme. It's actually a special line of product that Randy's selling. And it's also the name of this episode. And it's also what this episode is. It's a pandemic special. And it just gets a little meta. And that's kind of part of the joke, part of the fun. Randy references something he did last season, which actually happened also on the last season of South Park. So this is referencing his trip to China. This happened last year. This is an episode we covered last year. It was a very funny thing where South Park was calling out China a year ago before all this controversy and this pandemic that came from there. And basically, this is the rewrite I was talking about. South Park kind of inserts Randy into the history of this and basically comes up with this premise where when he was on that trip to China last October, when we covered that episode last year, they basically have this side story where he goes and parties with Mickey Mouse. We had scenes with Mickey Mouse in that episode last year. The basic premise last year was Randy was going to China to try to sell his products to them. And that was kind of the joke, like Disney sells to China now, the NBA, like it was goofing on all these American companies selling to China and like kind of like kissing their butts. And over there, Randy meets up with Mickey Mouse. They go and party. They hook up with a bat essentially. And that's what he says initially got the virus. He got the virus from a bat. And then that's how it got brought to the rest of the world. So essentially Randy caused the pandemic. That's the big premise and meme. And it causes him to freak out going forward in the episode. You know, he basically starts calling Mickey here. He's trying to figure out what to do, how to fix this, how to cover it up. And, you know, going forward, you see a lot more of that silliness. Next, we move back to the school part of South Park. School is trying to reopen. This is the school worker here, Mr. Mackey, trying to talk to the parents on another Zoom call. You could see on his computer screen, this is what Zoom looks like. This is what they goof about. All the people on this call start yelling and he has to mute them and go through all this stuff to try to calm them down. And essentially, they're trying to open schools. And what happens is all the teachers are afraid to go back to school. So who they have to hire is the cops. The cops end up becoming the teachers because they just got defunded. This is another timely joke about how police are under fire. They're getting defunded. And since they're defunded in South Park, they actually move them over and have them become the teachers. And this becomes another really funny premise when, you know, they have to go to school and stuff like that. But before we get to that, there's another turn in the Randy story. They have another flashback and it turns out here's him with Mickey Mouse. And what happens is it turns out that there was another animal involved. Apparently after Mickey and Randy hooked up with the bat, then they found this pangolin. It's this like strange kind of like scaled anteater creature. And they end up hooking up with that too. And that's what really kind of causes the virus more. And that's how the story moves forward is basically Randy hooking up with these animals. And that's what caused the virus. And that's what makes him more worried. And he has to go to the lab now to try and get that animal. They found the animal and they brought it to Colorado near South Park. They're studying it in a lab and Randy's going after it to try and stop it. Next, we go back to school. As you can see here, they have those shields. Everyone's wearing masks. There's like glass on the desk now. They're social distance. Here's a shot of them forcing Cartman to go back to school. He, of course, has been resisting this. He tries to pretend he's scared of the pandemic, but we know he just doesn't like class. He's just finding an excuse to get out of it. And this just goes to show like how schools are being affected by this. This is a big deal. People have been Zoom and doing school online. They're finally trying to go back. But what happens here gets really, really interesting. So we already can see the cops are the ones kind of running the school now. They're the teachers. Even if you look here, you can see Detective Harris and his partner are running this classroom. He's a real famous character. He's really funny. Like he's just this funny, funny cop character that always is goofing around. And he also, they come off like really super over the top racist. This is a joke that's been going on South Park for a while. And it kind of needs an explanation because it almost does seem like South Park is saying cops are racist and like cops are the worst. But really, they're just kind of goofing on them like they do everyone else. They're not really saying they're racist. It's more like they're dumb, but they do happen to not like black people. This is a joke that's happened with the cops before. Actually, I remember an episode with Michael Jackson way back many seasons ago, and they had this whole joke where the cops kept framing black people that were rich because they were jealous of them. And it was just this whole meme. And it comes back up here and it's relative to current events because as you all know, there's been riots and all kinds of crazy events in the streets here in America, mostly revolving around supposed claims that the cops are all racist and there's this bad police brutality problem. Uh, that's questionable. That's besides the point. What happens here in South Park is they really go over the top with it and they just kind of like take it to the next level with the cops who become these kinds of authoritarian figures in the school and then eventually in the city later on. But for this scene, essentially what happens is Carbon doesn't want to go to school. He shakes and like goes out of his desk. He ends up fighting with Kyle. They're both rolling around on the ground and then these cops decide to stop him and they're like, hey, wait, stop, don't move. And they actually take 
out their weapons and fire. And the funny part is they don't go after Cartman and Kyle, the ones that are fighting at all. They actually end up hitting Token. Token gets hit by their fire and he goes down. He, of course, is the black character on South Park. This is, of course, another race-based joke that is absolutely hilarious, very edgy. Like most people would not get away with this joke, especially in this day and age. But South Park has a long reputation. People know better than to kind of like hold it against them. I'm sure there are still some white knights out there and some very uptight PC police and like old ladies that would get mad about this. But most people know it's a joke and anyone that laughs at it, we're not like supporting that either. It's just super funny that South Park would portray it that way because that's kind of the way that the Democrats kind of represent the cops. They act like they just shoot minorities for no reason, but we know that very, very rarely happens. Okay, so going forward with the school story, what happens next is there's a COVID scare. They have to quarantine and lock the kids up in school. And then they say that one kid went to the hospital because of COVID. And then basically what happens is Stan calls him out and Stan's just like, wait a second. No, he didn't go to hospital because he was sick. You guys shot him. And they're like, well, we shot him because of COVID. And they have this whole joke where the cops are trying to explain away their error there. And also they're trying to blame it on COVID. And it goes to show like how in the real world, a lot of people are claiming COVID is getting blamed for a lot of things. People are just attaching COVID onto stuff and saying, oh, this person died because of COVID. Oh, I did this because of COVID. And it gets really, really over the top here for sure. Next, we turn back to Randy, who has a new plan on how to fix this whole situation that he caused. So essentially, one of the doctors says something about how the pangolin, the animal that he infected. So basically, to recap it, I mean, Randy caught the virus from a bat and then he gave it to a pangolin. That's another animal. And then that's what caused the new virus. I think there was some kind of mutation, they said. And the doctor said if they could get samples of Randy's DNA, they could maybe make a vaccine for everyone. And this is what sparks Randy to come up with this sort of harebrained scheme. He wants to save his friend here. This is Uncle Jimbo, his wife's sister. He's suffering from the virus. And Randy thinks that if he puts some of his DNA on some of his green products and then gives it to Jimbo, it could cure him. And that actually ends up working. He does it in a very crude way. It's hard to describe here, but he essentially puts some of his goo on the green plant and then makes Jimbo here in ingested and that results in him actually recovering from the virus but then there's a funny side effect that ends up happening to a lot of people randy repeats this process and gives everyone this new treatment secretly they're, they just think they're having some of his regular products but he gives them this new weird goo filled vaccine and what ends up happening the side effect is everyone that takes it ends up looking like randy more specifically they end up having his mustache this is the signature mustache and the next day like jimbo wakes up with the mustache you see everyone has the mustache. It gets really funny. Okay, now we can get to the whole Donald Trump side of this episode. Donald Trump comes up. Mr. Garrison has been playing a parody version of Trump, the president on this show for about five years now. It actually started before he was even elected during the primaries. And it's been going on and it's pretty funny. What happens here is the boys end up calling the president, asking him for help. This whole pandemic thing and the quarantine starts getting to them. But the president basically acts like a jerk. He says he doesn't want to help. He actually wants more people to get sick. He's kind of capitalizing on the pandemic in this story. And he does it for a funny, goofy, like joke reason. He says that he wants more minorities to die and that's happening with COVID. So he's just going to let it go. And it's obviously a joke. Like, again, it's kind of like the cop joke. It seems like it might be a very anti-cop or anti-Trump kind of joke. And it really is. I mean, they're goofing on them, but the real point, the funnier point is it's over the top. And it's like, you know, Trump isn't against minorities like this. You know, the police aren't either. And it's just kind of like another minority related joke too that becomes off really funny and essentially that's the little part you really even see from Trump in this it's barely there he comes back up at the end though okay moving forward the boys escape from their quarantine and their plan is to go to that Build-A-Bear shop like from the beginning Butters wants to go to Build-A-Bear Stan's trying to help him live that dream because really Stan he blames us on Butters and he acts like he's trying to help Butters but really he's really helping himself he's worried he doesn't like the way the world has changed he wants to get back to normal. And a lot of this is coming from Stan. Stan kind of represents us and like the normal person who's sick of the lockdowns and the craziness and all these like warnings and stuff. So he wants to take his friends to build a bear, do something normal for a change. It doesn't end up working out exactly well, but it does lead us to the conclusion of this episode. So they reach the build a bear. They try to make a bear. It doesn't turn out exactly well. It's kind of hard to make those bears. And then the next step is the police come in. As you can see in the background here, the police end up getting rearmed. They rehire the police in light of all this chaos. The mayor has to cave in.
cave in and actually gives the cops more funding. That's why they have like tanks and all these over the top weapons. They kind of like overdo it, just showing like the police in this over the top, like militaristic way, kind of like casting a little joke onto that. And then in addition, they get Randy comes up here. All the stories are colliding at the end. And what ends up happening is the pangolin comes out, that animal that's infected. And Randy was originally going to get rid of that, but he brings it back. And then Carmen threatens to kill the pangolin. He actually has a change of heart and ends up saving it. They're going to give the pangolin to the doctor, which ends up happening. Here's Cartman like changing his mind. And then they end up giving it to the doctor though, but that doesn't go well because then the president shows back up and hits him with a flamethrower. So that's the last joke about the president and the pandemic. They just torch it because Trump wants the pandemic to keep going. The Garrison Trump, you know, it's really Mr. Garrison. This is a parody of Trump, like we've said. And the other part that's really funny is after he torches the doctor and the pangolin, just basically getting rid of the way to cure the virus. He also says, go out and vote. Don't forget to vote. So he references the election a little bit. It's real funny there. And that just leads to the end. This fire actually gets into a crazy wildfire. So you can see there's some wildfires in the back here. So Trump actually sparks some wildfires. That references the real world wildfires. And that kind of wraps up the episode. Things kind of go back to the way they were. There's still a virus. There's no cure. We find out Randy had been behind it. And South Park wraps up another great episode that really nails every topic. It was really surprising to me how they tied it all in. I think a few people weren't on board. I did see some mixed reviews, but that's pretty typical for South Park these days and a lot of comedies. I mean, I think it's hilarious. If you're a fan, you're going to love it. But if you're just like, you know, you don't like it or you're not into South Park or something, or, you know, you're not into this season, whichever, then it might not be for you. But I think of all of us are going to like it. We've always liked South Park. So it's fun to talk about it. And I'm curious what they're going to do next, because they really did put everything you could think of in this episode. So going forward, they have a clean slate. They referenced everything that needed to be talked about this year, almost. They could expand on a few things. They really didn't get to talk about sports that much, which I think could be a good couple episodes. But right now, we don't even know what's going to happen because they actually don't have a season schedule. They referenced in this episode that they might do more specials. That was kind of like a joke. But I think they might end up doing like more specials this year, not like a regular season. Or they could just come back in a couple weeks and start doing their episodes like normal. I don't know. We'll see. They could not even come back at all. God forbid. I think they'll do something. But who knows at this point? We'll see. Tell me what you think. Comment your thoughts below. Tell me what you think about this episode. What you think about South Park. What you think they'll talk about next. Also hit the like button. Let's get this video shared. You know, the more likes and interest we have in this video I'm making and in South Park, the more likely they will come back and do something cool. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.